So here we are at camp for day three. There's the Burley Coho XC trailer. The Trek 520 Grando. I have one of the front panniers off sitting inside the shelter over there. The Thermarest sleeping pad when moving today it wasn't a long move. Uh, I didn't want to let the air out of that because I had such a hard time inflating it two nights ago that I don't want to play around with that until I get home tomorrow and then maybe the next day I'll mess around with that pump that I got for it and see if I can get that working better. If not, uh, that might not be living with me for long. But I have another one at home, so no worries. Here's the view. Some of you have seen this before from my past videos from a couple of trips I've done in this area. One by bike, one by canoe. Jarvis Bay, Lake Superior. This is the old bushcraft shelter I found a while back. In a little bit rough shape to say the least, but uh, there's a fire pit inside it now. It's supposed to be a little windy and cool later today, so I think I'll be setting up the Eureka chair right over there. Having a fire right down here. Probably spend some time reading this book. I was talking about this, I think, yesterday. Frank Whoops Lines on a Map book. And tonight I'll get into what I have left of this. I came out thinking this would be a two-day trip. Decided to make it a three-day trip. So I skipped the beer and wine last night. I have a little bit of wine left. And I'll enjoy that and at least a couple of beer tonight. I'm going to play around, gather up some more firewood. In the bottom of the Burley trailer here underneath the sea line pack. I do have a little bit of leftover firewood from yesterday's camp. I brought that with me. The last time I was here, I have uh, this pile of twigs and a half dozen decent chunks of firewood there left over. I left that for the next person. I did not know that would be me. And another piece of wood here about seven feet long that I gathered up but didn't use or cut down and process into firewood. That'll be part of today's uh, fire. Get talk. Anyways, my kettle is boiling. I'm going to do up a pot of coffee in the Java press over here and uh, get warmed up. More soon. Hey folks, Joe here again. Enjoying my coffee. This is warming me up quite nicely. Set that aside. I think I have the camera positioned so you can see me and see my stove down here. I've got it inside this little fire pit just to get it out of the wind a little bit. And I broke camp at the other place, which is very close by. First thing this morning, skipped breakfast, skipped coffee, everything. This is my first cup of coffee. It's one o'clock in the afternoon. I'm hungry. I got roughly a liter of water in this pot right here, and I'm going to make myself some soup. What we have here, this is all dehydrated ingredients I mixed together at home. Uh, we've got peas, green beans, mushrooms, onions. Uh, various peppers, some hot peppers, there's carrots, uh, I'm probably missing a few things, I believe I have some celery in here, and for broth, I didn't make broth this time and dehydrate it, but I will be doing that in the future, what I got was a few of those dehydrated beef broth cubes from the grocery store, I'm just going to open these guys up. Add my bowl and I'll dispose of that properly in the trash later. I'm going to put two of those in for now. I may add the third later to thicken up the broth if it looks like it needs it. Probably add a little bit of this out to make it a little faster. This part is going slow because the broth cubes are so freaking cold. Fire up the stove. We're on a fairly good heat for now, so the water is boiling. Then we're going to do a simmer. Put that guy up there. Give that broth mix a little stir. I'm going to take this package of soup mix that I made. Again, this is all from my dehydrator at home. I may have to add some water to that because that's uh, looking like a lot of soup mix. And we're going to add 
few dehydrated hash browns, get some potato in there. Last but not least, some ground hamburger, ground beef. And a little bit of meat to that. Not too much. My last meal today, or my meal before doing the ride back home tomorrow, is going to be pasta, dehydrated pasta sauce, which I'll add some ground beef and onions to, and uh, dehydrated cooked pasta. Last time I was out here, or two times ago, the time on the bike trip, I did a video making pasta using dehydrated sauce. The only difference is on that trip, I didn't have time beforehand to get around to dehydrating the pasta, cooking it up, and dehydrating it. This time I did. I put the sauce in the bottom of the pan, along with some pre-cooked pasta, a little bit of vegetable oil, and then boiling water just to cover it up and a little bit more. Remove from the heat, let that simmer, rehydrate for about 15-20 minutes, add a little bit of cheese, and that will be done. Two more things to add. bit of oregano, that has some seasoning in there, and some nice quite spicy seasoning. Perfect thing on a cold fall day. The breeze is coming right in at me off Lake Superior. I can feel it, but that is fine. I'm prepared for that. how thick the soup gets, I may add a little bit of water. I'll get room to add that much more water to thin it out a little bit. I may have gone a little heavy on the uh, food ingredients just because I'm cold and hungry. But anyways, I'll check back on that every few minutes. You don't need to watch the rest of that process. So I'll be back. Nothing like a nice hot soup to warm you up on a cool fall day. Okay, let's check on this soup. Bring along real nice, thickening up. That is really good. I'm bending down because I'm not sure if you can see me when I'm sitting up. Because I got the camera angled down to the suit, but that is really good. I'm going to turn off the stove now. Just some of this up into my bowl and get some hot food into me. I'll be back soon. So we're getting camp set up here now, and the thermo rest that I was having trouble with, mainly just having trouble with the pump that uh, is supposed to inflate it very quickly, a few minutes, which didn't. I managed to get her inflated decently the first night, which ended up being for the first two nights using this stuff sack, which is also a pump, and now I'm just getting a little bit of extra air in it for tonight. It was fairly comfortable the last two nights, it wasn't bad, but I want to try it again. As I mentioned this morning, I brought this over, still inflated it, I didn't want to let the air all out and risk uh, not being able to get it satisfactory again today, though I don't think that would have been a problem. But after I get this back home, I am going to play around with it a bit more and decide whether or not I'm going to keep this one. I'll just go with my big, comfy, deluxe one that I bought about a month before this. By the way, all is good. Put that valve down. Bring it around inside. Love having two door tents, by the way. Pocket over here. So this is the same tent I had last time I was here, both for our, the uh, cycling trip in September, North Face Rock 22, and the six day canoe trip where I spent a couple nights over here as well. Same tent, different sleeping pad. First two trips I had the big Thermo Rest Deluxe map, the 25 inch wide, 77 inch long, 3 inches thick. A little on the heavy side and bulky for bicycle touring. I did the job last month, but for this one I got this pad. Same length and width, 25 by 77, 2 inches thick. It's less than half the weight, much more compact, packs down really nice. Takes 
no longer to inflate, it's not self-inflating, but it all works out well with it. Gives me a good second option, something to use for bicycle touring, uh, backpacking, new tripping where there's a lot of portages. New trip like the recent one I did where there was supposed to be no portages, ended up being one, half a kilometer uphill. That was fine, no problem. I really, actually I really enjoyed that portage. But it's nice to have some different gear options to suit different trips and their needs. The other one also has a higher R value for insulation. This one's a little on the lower end. Uh, we're getting into the minus temperatures now. If it gets much colder and I do some more trips, I'll be bringing the more heavy duty luxury sleeping pad. Again, with that R value and extra thickness. But for now, this will do. The other thing I changed up for this trip, excuse me while I walk over here. The last two trips. New trip and cycling trip. I had my Marmot minus nine down sleeping bag. Forget the model name of it. I will look that up hopefully when I go home if I remember. I had both these bags for a very long time. This one, Marmot 800 fill. It's the Toolbar DL. DL means dry loft or dry loft. It's rated as zero degree Fahrenheit minus 18 degrees Celsius. Kept me nice and warm the last couple nights. I'm sure we'll do so again tonight. And same as the last two nights, I will have my candle lantern up hanging from the gear loft. It's a fresh candle. That last nine or ten hours. Both the vestibules closed. It's all mash the tent. Both the vestibules closed. You will retain a little extra heat. Clean my body. Putting out some heat and the candle burning all night. It's not bright enough to affect my sleeping. But it does keep the temperature up a couple of degrees. And I'll be using that again tonight. I do another trip this year, I'll have a version of that same candle lantern. Instead of having one candle, it has three candles. And uh, we'll try that one out and maybe do a review on it soon. Anyway, I'm going to get finished setting up the camp here, get the fly on, and all that. Talk to you soon. Yeah, I really love the fall colors out here this time of year. It's just, just awesome. Side. Split up a little bit of the wood that I cut up, some of the kindling in there. Got a little bit of a sly wood back here. I'm not going to have the fire going on only for maybe two or three hours. Got some birch bark, some small twigs and fire starter for tomorrow morning if I choose to have the fire before rolling out to head back to town. We'll see. Tonight, last night in camp. Set and have the fire. Tents just over there. Bikes there. Trailers over there. I don't know if you can see my arm from the camera angle, but anyways, they're right behind me. I got a couple beer here and a little bit of leftover wine. I'm gonna have that relaxing evening. Get to bed early. Uh, last night I was in the tent 
it was quarter to nine, and uh, it was a cool, cool night. Stayed in the tent, slept in late till about 10.30 or so. Packed up, headed over here from the other side. Kind of like it here better after all, so here we are. We'll enjoy a beer and take it easy. Shut off the camera and save the batteries for a little bit. Batteries tend to discharge faster when it's uh, cooler weather. But the phone turned off. I got it in my chest pocket here. Keep it warm. Uh, still got a lot of life in the battery charger. That's in the tent over there. It's still showing four bars despite three full days of use charging the phone and the camera. Charged up this little light here a little while ago as well. It's got a USB port on it. Doesn't look like much right now, but it lights up this little space quite nice once it's dark outside. You might see that later. We'll see. Hey folks, so it's about quarter after seven here, Sunday evening. As you can see, I got my campfire going nicely. I don't know if you can see it, but uh, along the edges of the fire pit, there's some um, pieces of wood laying on the stones, kind of preheating them slash drying them a little bit. Some of the wood was a little bit damp today, some of the stuff I cut up, some falling, fallen uh, dead wood. And uh, just kind of drying that out, getting it ready, and it's burning really nice once I put it into the fire. Uh, the fire was a little bit slow to get going into good coals. I had to add a little bit here and there, but no big deal. Within a half hour, I had a real nice fire going, and it's going strong. I'll probably hang out here for another, oh, well, it's going to be dark in about 15-20 minutes. I'll shine you out at the lake here right now. So as you can see, it's, it's getting there. Probably got about 15 minutes of light, of usable light. And then I'll probably hang out here till about, uh, probably about 9, 9.30. I went into the tent around 8.30 or so last night and I uh, had real good sleep. The night before, I was up till about 11. Didn't get here till a little after 5, so by the time I got camp set up, got everything going, hot meal, Got the campfire going. Want to relax for a while. Tonight it'll be somewhere in between. Uh, yeah, 9, 9.30, maybe 10 o'clock. Sleep in tomorrow, let, let the sun come up, warm things up a little bit, and I'll break camp, have a bite to eat, have a cup of coffee, get the bike loaded, and start the ride back into town. The first half kilometer of the ride, that has one of the toughest sections in it, two, two of the toughest sections, but they're practically right together. And then, uh, I don't know, a kilometer or so later, on the main gravel road, there's a very steep section uphill, which is uh, kind of crazy going down. But going up, it's kind of crazy in that, uh, yeah, it's a tough slog. I'll probably end up walking the top part of it with a regular bike, no touring gear, no added weight, you no problem to ride it, but that's not the case right now. Anyways, hopefully I'll have the camera going and you'll see some of that for from tomorrow and we'll go from there. Talk to you, talk to you soon. Hey folks, Joe here again. One last update here for uh, Sunday evening. This is day three of the trip. Day four is tomorrow and that will be the ride back home. Uh, last night about this time or a little bit earlier, I was talking about how I was planning on Changing up the sites, abandoning the little campsite I set up in the woods up a, a couple hundred meters up the river, the Jarvis River. Thinking I'd really like that. I first scouted that out, uh, oh, about eight years ago. And finally got around to checking it out again this year. And it's okay, but uh, I realized I really prefer it down here on or near the main beach in Jarvis Bay. In the background, you can probably hear the small waves crashing on the shore right now. I'll just shut up for a second. Just small waves rolling in right now. 
But in the daytime, you got a beautiful view looking out over the bay into Superior. Just down the beach a ways to my right, it opens up. You can see the open water past the islands. And it's just uh, much more enjoyable here. I'm really glad I made the decision last night to break camp this morning. Head back down this way, set up camp here for the last night. And I'm really enjoying today. This has been the highlight of the trip ever since getting here and setting up camp again. Met a couple people earlier today that were on the beach just checking it out. A couple of day trippers from uh, Flake Superior drove in, taking a little walk, chatted with them a little bit. Turns out we have a mutual friend. This girl just took a couple kayak courses this summer from a friend of mine, Zach Cruzens. Sand Adventures, such a nice day. So a little shout out to uh, Zach. And uh, yeah, had a really good day. I'm feeling good. Sipping on a glass of wine. Heading off to bed fairly soon after the fire dies down. I got uh, two or three more sticks to burn off. Let her die down to embers. Put her out. And then uh, I'm off to bed. Get a good sleep in. Break camp tomorrow. Have a bite to eat. And ride on home and get back to work. We will talk to you soon. Thank you.